Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater is going to be, for most players, a fresh take on the horror genre. This series of games has been around since early 2000s, and this release is more of an enhanced edition rather than a remaster of the 2014 video game from the main series of Japanese horror video games known as Zero in Japan or Project Zero outside the US, like Europe and Australia. Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater Remastered is available on Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S with the next-gen update, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. It's probably also the first time most gamers are going to be interacting with this unique horror franchise of video games from Japan publisher Koei Tecmo. So let's see if this scary video game is more than just cheap jump scares and waifu fanservice. Gameplay the premise of the gameplay is actually quite simple, and where a lot of players might be deterred from playing the game. You use an object called the Camera Obscura to point at ghosts, enemies, and photograph them, in a way that deals different levels of damage depending on the quality of your photo and film, which is your ammo. You do collect as you play currency for skin unlocks and consumables like revive items, HP, recovery items, and the usual fanfare. It is a third-person, non-linear, open-world exploration style of gameplay, with first-person being the only way you can aim. At first you might find it constraining and sluggish, but just like I did, hold on, don't quit, okay? The game, because it is actually really good once you get the hang of it. It's just, it might be the performance on the Xbox One S that might be holding you back from enjoying this title, so definitely check out the performance section on this video. In my gameplay journey, I came to appreciate this unique take on horror by not having to rely on weaponry, like in the video game series Resident Evil or Silent Hill. Instead, it is a unique way of handling the paranormal. You play as one of the three characters, with the fourth character actually being an extra mission where you play as Ayane from the Dead, of, Dead or Alive series. All characters have their own costumes and unlocks that you can get by spending the in-game currency, which you get by taking great pictures. Also, all of the characters pretty much play the same, but do come with their own voice lines and outfits, which you can change before starting a chapter. Sadly though, you can't change outfits once the level has started, which is weird. Gameplay wise it is unique, simple, and about halfway through the game you pretty much experienced everything you will when it comes to gameplay mechanics. Yet it is so different, like Pokemon Snap style, that more than likely you've never played anything like this. And it will take you almost half of the game to truly understand and enjoy or hate the mechanics. Story the game takes place in Japan, around 1980s, especially in fictional mountain of Hikami. The way the story is delivered is slow, and I will keep spoilers away, but just know that it is slow, and it does use a lot of jump scares, but it tackles serious topics that if you're not familiar with Logan Paul, you won't know what I'm talking about, but you know what happened to him. It deals with a lot of that stuff, and it does have some heavy moments, and I think it is a serious story worth experiencing in the horror genre, but definitely not AAA level. Graphics and performance. Now let's talk graphics and the performance. So with graphics, of course, you're not getting a AAA title, so don't expect mind-blowing textures and complex artwork, but I believe that it is the combination of color grading, sound design, and voice acting, plus the unique style of delivery that is definitely Japanese-y, uh, bring together a visual presentation that is unique enough to differentiate itself from other titles in the same genre. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on that, though. And so, performance. Here we go. Xbox One S and Xbox One X. As you can see, Xbox One X technically has on average a little lower frame rate than the FPS on the Xbox One S, but it does not come with screen tearing, which is definitely better, and the input lag is lower. Resolution-wise, I believe Xbox One S is at around 900p, Xbox One X is either 1440p or 4K. I don't believe there is any dynamic resolution at play here. And now moving to the next generation of consoles, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S both attempt 60fps and don't make it, but zero, latent, uh, zero screen tearing and pretty much no loading times. Plus, just being above the 30fps and being more stable than the prior consoles makes the game, th this makes it so the Xbox Series consoles is the definite place to experience this title. That is though also remedied with VRR, if you specially have that, variable refresh rate TV or monitor, uh, bubble on top explaining what it is, but if you have that, the game runs smooth as butter on, on those respective consoles. 
Uh, I am surprised though a little bit that the Xbox Series X and Series S don't hit their target frame rate, but that's odd. Optimization, I suppose. Sound design. The sound design is tense and immersive, as I mentioned earlier, but don't expect the Callisto Protocol levels of immersion here. I recommend checking out my video game review on that video game, little bubble on top, but you are getting a good 2014 non-AAA sound design here that fits the game nicely. Achievements and fan service. According to True Achievements, it can take about 50 to 60 hours to get all the achievements, and this is not then an easy pick up and play for unlocking achievements or trophies. On the fan service side of things, I can confirm for science that gravity performs its sacred duties by allowing the melons to react to the laws of physics and nature. So be at ease, man of culture. The costumes and uh, outfits are good and fun. Limited in quantity though, but you are here for the horror and pretty faces, so you shouldn't be complaining too much. The Japanese voiceovers here for, uh, for those of us that speak Japanese. And so, conclusion. To conclude, Fatal Frame Made in with Blackwater is a fresh, new, yet old approach to horror that I believe Western video game players should at least give it a try. They have the fourth game in the series coming out early 2023 called Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, which never made it out of Japan until soon. So make sure you subscribe and follow me, because you bet I will be covering that game for sure when it comes out. Sayonara.